and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited about today's video because we are celebrating October 1st of 1971, 50 years ago today when Walt Disney World opened the Magic Kingdom for the very first time. And it's just such an exciting day. I wish I could be there for it, but also I don't think I could possibly handle those crowd levels today. So I am happy to be home and just sharing with you guys everything that I have learned about the grand opening of Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida 50 years ago. So I was lucky enough to get this Time Life magazine for Christmas from my mom a couple of years ago and it has the article of the opening day of Walt Disney World. And first of all, take note, can you see Minnie Mouse there? She's wearing a yellow dress and red ears. So the costumes definitely have changed over the years. Unfortunately, I had nothing yellow to wear. I wanted to wear a yellow dress for this video. The best I could do was some yellow flowers. So <laughs> I guess that counts for something. But anyway, there's just some really great and fascinating photos in here of the um, first day of the opening of Walt Disney World. So highly recommend if you can find a copy of this Life magazine. It just has some really, really beautiful photographs and things that I don't think I can really share because I will probably get monetized for it. So <laughs> let's talk about the first day of the grand opening of the Magic Kingdom. Interestingly enough, the idea of the Magic Kingdom was supposed to be a year round vacation destination that had water sports, golf, horseback riding as well as the Magic Kingdom. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, they really kind of held true to their initial thought of how they were going to proceed with this incredibly large vacation destination. So they did a great job in pulling that off. The main focal point was always supposed to be Mickey Mouse, starting with the big Mickey Mouse floral head right in front of the train station when you are first entering the Magic Kingdom. And that is how guests are still greeted today. And I think that's pretty fascinating that they held true to so many of the traditional things that they had done on day one. So Mickey would always be the one to lead the parades and they did have parades obviously on this day as they entered the Magic Kingdom. Mickey Mouse led the parade into the Magic Kingdom going down Main Street. He also was the focal point of the Mickey Mouse review. And, and this was a ride that closed down in 1980, but basically it's Mickey Mouse and he's an audio animatronic and he is the leader of the band. <laughs> and there is Donald and there is Huey, Dewey and Louie. There are so many characters that are lesser known as well in this musical review. So I found that to be pretty fascinating and I'm kind of sad that it's gone, but currently Mickey's PhilharMagic has taken its place and I really enjoy that as well. So I guess I can't be too sad about it. Okay, on opening day, there were 10,000 guests. They had anticipated that there would be at least 20,000. So it was only half of what they thought and I think the big deterrent was people were so worried about it being overcrowded and crazy that they got scared out of going. So the crowd level was actually not that bad for the first day. And then to start this 25,000 acre land of amusement park hosted 9,000 employees and it cost over $400 million to build, which by today's standards is really <laughs> not so bad at all if you think about it. There were two hotels already in place, the Polynesian and the Contemporary Resort, which were pretty fascinating to new guests coming with the monorail system that went right through the hotel and brought you into the parks. So I still think that's pretty amazing. So imagining what, what something like that must have felt like back in 1971, that seems pretty advanced. And the actual official opening day, which was considered dedication day, was October 25th. Although the resorts were open, they were not fully open and functioning until October 25th. And in addition to the monorail system, they had those ferry boats and trams that would get you to the park. Now, when you drove into Disney and you had to park in the parking lot, 
it was only 50 cents to park. <laughs> Can you guys even imagine? I cannot believe how expensive parking is now. Um, it just cost them 50 cents to park. And then once you did get over to the Magic Kingdom and if you had to park, obviously, you know you still need to get into the Magic Kingdom because they did a really good job of putting this park in a place where it was very remote and you really couldn't see much of the outside world. So you really do feel like you're in the Disney bubble. You don't see traffic going by. You don't hear or see anything else on the outside world. So because everything is so set back, you do need to take a monorail or a ferry boat over into the Magic Kingdom. So the two original ferries were called Ports O'Call and the Southern Seas. And then the original monorail colors were orange, green, gold, and blue. So those were the OG monorails that were in working condition on the very first day that the Magic Kingdom was open. Main Street was very similar to the way that it is today, but they had flower carts in the middle of the street. I thought that was pretty cool. They also had a clock shop a card shop that was sponsored by Hallmark. They had a Penny Arcade, the House of Magic, and a tobacco nest. I, I'm not really sure how to say that, but it's a place that sells tobacco. <laughs> Boy, have we come a long way. On Main Street, there was entertainment. They had the Dapper Dans. The Dapper Dans were out there on Main Street on the very first day that the Magic Kingdom was open. They also had the Firehouse Band, a pianist at the Refreshment Corner, which was sponsored by Coca-Cola and is currently now Casey's Corner. They had a saxophone quartet called the Keystone Cops and a Crystal Palace Trio. And then of course the Disney characters paraded around throughout the day up and down Main Street. And the Crystal Palace was actually there. It was just a big cafeteria where you could eat. So that was pretty cool to find out. As well as the Diamond Horseshoe, that was still there as well. There really wasn't much going on over in Tomorrowland, um, but Adventureland was up and running and Fantasyland was up and running. And in order to go on the rides that they had on that day, you needed to purchase a ticket and if you guys watched my video that I did on the Boo to You readathon I talk a lot about the different categories of tickets but basically to enter and to go on rides you had an A ticket, a B ticket, C ticket, a D ticket, and an E ticket and the categories were kind of categorized in regards to how thrilling the rides were. So from each ticket, you could pick one ride, but they also had a system where you can purchase additional tickets. So for instance, the e-ticket had most of the rides that I would want to go on, including the Haunted Mansion. So if I wanted to go on more than one of those rides, you can purchase additional tickets to do so. So I thought that was pretty fascinating as well. And if you're curious to know what rides were up and running on this very day in Disney, these are the rides and the things that I would want to do if I were there on October 1st, 50 years later, and there weren't a bajillion zillion people there. <laughs> this is what I would want to do because these are all of the rides that were there and functioning at the time of opening. So we have the Country Bear Jamboree. I love the Country Bears. I know some people cannot stand that ride. I hope they never get rid of it. I just think they are so funny and entertaining. We have the Dapper Dance, not a ride, but entertainment on Main Street. They're still going strong. We had Dumbo. We had the Fantasy in the Sky fireworks at night. So fireworks have always been a thing since day one in Disney World. And then we have the Frontierland Shoot and Arcade. Also the Hall of Presidents, the Haunted Mansion, It's a Small World, the Jungle Cruise, the Mad Tea Party, but the Mad Tea Party did not yet have a roof over it. It was just an open ride. Eventually they figured out it's just too freaking hot in Florida <laughs> to have a ride that doesn't have shelter. Um, they also had Peter Pan's Flight, Main Street Vehicles, Prince Charming's Royal Carousel, Cinderella's Royal Carousel. I think on the ticket it says Cinderella's Carousel. And then they had Snow White's Scary Adventure. I was lucky enough to be able to go on that before they took it out of the Magic Kingdom. I thought it was really a fun ride. A lot of the younger kids did get scared because the witch came out and she was slightly terrifying, but I really thought that was a great ride and I'm sad that it's no longer there. The Swiss Family Treehouse, as well as the Tomorrowland Speedway, the Walt Disney World Railroad, the Enchanted Tiki Room, 
and then they had the Liberty Square Riverboats. They also had 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea did not open until October 14th. They had the Mickey Mouse Review. I'm actually looking at the tickets now just to make sure I didn't miss anything. So there was also the Mickey Mouse Review, the Skyway to Fantasyland, Flight to the Moon, the Skyway to Tomorrowland, and the riverboat was called at that time the Admiral Joe Fowler Riverboat. They had the Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoes and then they also had Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. That is one that I'm so sorry that I missed out on because I would have loved to have gone on it. It's in Disneyland. Disneyland is what I want to do for my 50th birthday, so I am already planning for that. Still have a couple of years to go, but it's it's in the plan. <laughs> I definitely want to get to Disneyland. And then in Tomorrowland, you had the Grand Prix Raceway, and you also had the Mike Fink Keel Boats. I found those online and they looked like they were pretty cool. I wish they were still around. That looks like it would have been a lot of fun. And they had the omnibus, the horse cars, the main street vehicles, and yes, it was called Cinderella's Golden Carousel rather than Prince Charming's Royal Carousel. So that was the Fantasyland ride for the A ticket. And the adult ticket was only priced at $5.75 not a bad deal if you wanted to add on rides they ranged anywhere from 10 cents a ticket to 90 cents a ticket still totally doable so i just can't believe how much things have changed and on the front of the ticket was this quote welcome to walt disney world and the magic kingdom we hope that you and your family will enjoy your stay in the vacation kingdom here at walt disney world a multitude of recreational leisure activities is yours to enjoy this ticket book is your passport to many wonderful adventures in the Magic Kingdom. May your stay be a pleasant one, and may you return and visit us again someday soon. That's so beautiful. <laughs> I would have loved to have had that ticket book. I think that is just such a beautiful greeting as you first walk into the Magic Kingdom for your very first time. And, and I can actually remember my first time in the Magic Kingdom it was, I believe, in 1987. I'm not 100%, but it was 87, 88, something like that. I was 13 or 14 years old, and there really is nothing like walking into the Magic Kingdom and seeing Cinderella's Castle, and I can't talk about it, and I can't do it without getting emotional, because it's such an overwhelming feeling, because you are just stepping into literally this fantasy world where everything is so amazing and fun and magical. It's everything that I imagined it could possibly be. And this is why everybody talks about the Disney bubble, because you really are in this bubble and it really does make you feel like you have stepped into a place where you are safe and you are there just to have a good time. You are a child, no matter what your age. It truly does not matter how old you are in Disney. You can be a child all over again. You can have fun on all of the rides and it's totally not weird. <laughs> Maybe that's why I really, really love Disney. And amazingly, in all of these 50 years, Disney has only closed down outside of this global pandemic thing that we're going through right now. They only closed down a total of seven times in 50 years. Six of those times were for hurricanes that frequently barrel through Florida, and one time was for 9-11. But then sadly, they had to close their doors on March 15th of 2020, and did not open again until July 11th of 2020. So that is a long time for a park that has never been closed other than those handful of times that we just discussed for this pandemic. And they took a huge financial loss. So many people were laid off, so many jobs lost. It was just such a hard time. And I think that we, as a Disney community, are rebounding really well. Disney is coming back strong. They are continuing to create magical experiences for their guests. They are always expanding and upgrading and making things better and making things more interesting for their guests. I know not everyone truly loves some of the things that they're doing, 
like Genie Plus and taking away Magical Express and um, kind of taking from us what we feel has always been guaranteed to us as part of our Disney package. But we need to evolve and we need to make up for lost time. I still feel that it's important to continue to go to Disney because the magic and the experience far, far outweighs anything else that's happening on the vacation planning part of it. So I don't mind having a rental car or pulling an Uber or going through Disney's mayor service. I don't mind paying for fast passes if that's what's necessary for me and my family at the time. If I, I just am in a place where I can't handle lines or I can't do lines, if, if I have to have fast passes, I don't mind purchasing that. I know that Disney has gotten a lot more expensive since 1971, but it's still the most magical place on earth and it is still the one place that I would always choose to be far above and beyond any other destination. I have been to a lot of places, I have seen a lot of things, nothing gives me the feeling that Disney does. So for me personally, it's all worth it. <laughs> I really hope that you guys have enjoyed kind of taking a trip down memory lane. I think it's pretty cool that so many of the original rides in Disney are still standing. We can still experience them. Many of us have experienced them as young children, and now we're sharing those very same experiences with our children and maybe someday our grandchildren. So Disney has definitely left a legacy that we as individuals carry on, and I think that makes us so connected in such a special way as a Disney community. So thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments below, what year did you first go to the Magic Kingdom. Were you there for the 50th? Were you one of those lucky few people who got to be there for the grand opening day? Or were you just there back in 1971 or any time frame close to that? I think it would be pretty amazing if you had photographs or if you just had great memories of that time, how lucky you are to be a part of something so historical and amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know your thoughts in the comments for sure. And I will see you all really soon. Take care. Bye.